Hello and welcome to the course of Network Security. In this lecture, I will be talking about access control. Today agenda. First, uh, we will see the introduction of access control, the basic elements of the access control like authentication, authorization, audit, etc. And then we will see different uh, types of access control and different mechanism that we actually used for uh, for controlling access to the system resources and finally there is a topic which is called access control list or acl i will not talk about acl in this class but i would like you to put some energy uh, into the topic and uh, uh, search that topic on your own i'll learn the topic at your own so first let us see what is actually the access control mechanism Access control, uh, you can say it is the method by which systems determine whether and how to admit a user into a trusted area of the organization. That trusted area of the organization could be any information system, could be uh, your hard disk, could be any piece of software, any piece of information, any piece of data and things like that. You can say that actually the access control mechanism regulates which user or in some cases which applications or in some cases which, which devices can actually view, edit, aid or delete resources in the organization environment. So you decide or in some cases the system administrator decide who is actually allowed to perform certain type of actions. Controlling access is one of the key practices that we use in the world of security to protect our sensitive data from theft, from misuse, from abuse or from any other open threats that are available in the, uh, in the world of, uh, in the digital world. So you can say that access control is one of the most important cyber security practices and we need to give proper attention to them. To see uh, the different components uh, that actually make the access control, let us see. Okay, uh, this is actually the context of access control. Here you will see different components. For example, uh, we have authentication, uh, we have uh, access control here, we have auditing, we have authorization, we have resources which could be either software or hardware resources, we have a security uh, personnel who is actually responsible for managing these resources or allo allocating different rights to different users. So let us see them one by one. First thing is authentication. You are quite familiar with this word. It is actually the verification that the credential like password and username of a user or other system entity, they are valid. This process is known as authentication where, where you actually verify that the credential provided by a user are actually valid. And once you provide authentication, you need to authorize that, uh, that, that person or you need to authorize the grants which are allocated to that uh, users. So the next step is authorization. Authorization is actually the granting of a right or permission to a system entity. That entity could be a user, for example, in this case, or it could be an application. And you provide permission to that system entity to access a system resource. So you can say that actually we have a function and that function is called access control function. And actually this function determine who is trusted for a given operation. It could be edit, it could be read, it could be modify, it could be delete operation, etc. So authorization means whether you have the 
the rights or permission to do a specific task to perform any specific action or not and we also have auditing it is like an independent review and examination of the system records and also the activities in order to test for adequacy of system controls or you can say auditing is performed to detect breaches in security and also to recommend any uh, changes in the control policy and procedures in order to enhance the security of the system audit means like you are going to keep an eyes on what activities are actually performed by the user at which time those activities were performed and things like that for example in database application we actually use the log file to record different activities operations that were performed at different times on the database okay we will come back to these topics later on in this lecture Okay, but this is just to give you uh, a brief overview of the different uh, elements of the access control. So again, I would say that access control is an important component of the cyber security practices and we need to give proper attention to them. Uh, typically uh, in the figure, let me go back to the figure. Uh, let me clear everything actually uh, we have different functions as well for example the authentication function it actually determine whether this user is permitted to access the system at all or not and then the access control function is the second function which will determine if the specific requested access by the user to these system resources is permitted or not and then we have the security administrator which maintains an authorization database that specify the type of access to which the resources is allocated for this user this uh, access control function consult this database to, de to determine whether to grant this access or to deny that access means all the policies are defined in this database which user is actually allowed to perform any specific action that are defined in this database uh, we will refer to it later on as the um, access control list okay we also have an auditing function and this actually uh, keeps a record of user accesses to system resources in this simple model uh, the access control function is shown as a single logical module however in practices a number of components may cooperatively share the access control function and if you know about the operating system the operating system have at least a basic uh, access control component built in in each and every operating system and in some cases uh, some advanced operating system uh, will contain quite robust type of access control components and beside from operating system built-in security you can actually add install many add-on security packages that will sum, uh, supplement uh, the native access control capability of the operating system okay for example beside from that you can also use different type of firewalls uh, which will actually provide access control services and will keep an eye on the traffic in and traffic out of the organization so let us uh, move to the basic elements of the access control normally we have three basic elements subjects objects and access rights let us see them one by one first subject is an entity that is capable of accessing the objects means subjects will access the objects the subject could be any user or it could be an application and this uh, user or this application will actually gain access to an object by mean of a process okay and that process take on attributes of the user such as access rights so a subject is typically a uh, typically uh, 
held accountable for the actions they have initiated. Remember the audit part as we just saw in the previous slide. Any actions performed by that subject, that user, that application will be audited. And that auditing process may be used to record the association of a subject uh, with security relevant actions performed on an object. Now, uh, related to subject, uh, we have basic access control systems that actually define three classes of subjects and they are owner, group and world. As the name indicate, owner, this may be the creator of a resource such as a file. Who create the file? What is the name of the user for example? What is the application that initiated uh, the file access etc. For uh, system resources, ownership may belong to a system administrator. Normally, the system administrator is the owner of a file, and if it is a if it is a project-based resource, then maybe a project administrator or the leader of the project or project manager is responsible for the ownership. And then we have group. As the name indicate, uh, in addition to the privileges assigned to an owner, a group of users may also be granted access rights. For example, in a class, the teacher is the owner. But inside the class, a teacher can create a group of students. Let's suppose two, three CRs or the toppers, first, second, third position holder of the, of the, of the class. They, they can make a group. And then you assign certain privileges to that group. Then we have the world. All students in the class is the world. And the least amount of access that is granted to user. For example, the faculty member has more privileges, more access rights than the group of few students. They have some, uh, some privileges, but not all of them. And then the world, all students, they have very least uh, privileges. For example, here, the owner can actually mark the assignment. The group can actually upload the assignment and the world can see the, the score in a particular assignment. So three different classes of subjects are there. Then the second element is the object. An object is a, a resource to which access is controlled. In general, an object is an entity used to contain information or used to receive information. For example, a file. It could be a file, the object could be a file, it could be a page of a document, it could be a segment, it could be a portion of a file, it could be a directory, it could be anything, it could be a message, even it could be a program. So everything that you want to access is actually the object. And some access control system, uh, they even consider the bits, the bytes, the words as an object. Okay, the number and types of the objects to be protected by an access control system, actually it depends on the environment in which the access control mechanism is applied. Then we have the access right, and this is the focus. Access right describes the way in which a subject may access an object. You have a user, you have an, an information, the user is subject, the information is object, whether you are allowed to access that information or not. Who will decide the access rights? And it could be different types of rights, like read only, and you're quite familiar with these terms in the databases, you have studied about them. Read, actually, a user may view the information in a system resource. And then write, a user may add or modify something in the file. And then execute is like user may execute specific programs, delete, user may delete certain system resources as well, such as files or records, create, actually the user may create a new file, a new record, a new field in the table, etc. And then search, the user may list the file in a directory or otherwise search the directory for a specific information. Okay, so these are different access rights that you can actually provide to different types of users or different types of groups or even to the whole world. 
Next is access control types or sometimes they are referred as policies. Two types, fundamentally we have two types of access control. Discretion, discretionary and non-discretionary. Uh, First, let us see what is meant by discretionary uh, access control. You may be familiar with the word discretionary or discretion. It is actually uh, giving the freedom to the user to decide what should be done in a particular situation. Actually, the control is in the hand of the user. The actual user actually set the access policies. That is called the discretionary access control. So you can say that the discretionary access control is an identity-based access control that provides user a certain amount of control over the data. Uh, this policy is termed uh, discretionary. Sorry if I pronounce it wrongly. Actually, uh, the term means that an entity might have access rights that permit the entity by its own willingness to enable other entity to access some resources. For example, you have the authority to share a file with your friends, with your class fellow. Okay. So in that case, you are, you are using the discretionary uh, access control mechanism. And this is, by the way, the traditional method of implementing an access control. Data owners or any user authorized to control data can define access permission for specific users or even specific groups of users. And you can see from the figure, we have an owner of this object, or you can say this is the subject. And he has the right to access this file. However, in this case, the user allow other group of a user to access the file or the object. So access permission for each piece of data are actually stored in the database, which is known as the access control list, ACL. This list can be generated automatically when a user grants access to somebody or it can be created by an administrator as well. Okay, so an ACL actually uh, contain or it include user and groups that might access data and levels of access that might have. An example of a uh, deck is that you may be familiar with such type of permissions while you are using your Windows operating system. You have a folder and then you assign permissions to different users, to the world, everyone to the world. Everyone can read the file, okay. Everyone can change the file, no. Everyone have full control, no. So you can allow accesses or you can even deny accesses for certain user or for certain group of a user. Second type is known as NDEC or non-discretionary uh, access control. It is actually managed by a central authority in the organization, not by the user itself, as we saw in the previous case. So a form of a non-dictionary uh, discretionary access control is called a lattice based access control or LBAC. This is actually a type of model in which users are assigned a metric of authorization for particular area of access. Uh, lattice is a terminology which is used in geometrical structure. Okay, so uh, we will not go into the detail of the geometrical structure, but the concept here is that the authorization is actually controlled by a centralized authority, not by the user. The lattice uh, structure actually contains subjects and objects and the boundaries associated with each pair are separated. Uh, there are different level of access or there are different types of this category. You can see we have role-based, we have 
task based and we have mandatory and some other types so let us see the different types of this non discretionary access control the first type is role based access control and you can see from the name role role based access control are associated with the duties a user perform in an organization for example uh, you are a project manager so your role is managerial you are CR of a class so your role is to lead the students or to represent the students role based control access control a control access based on the roles that a user have within a certain environment within the system within the organization and based on those rules, uh, based on those roles, you actually decide whether accesses should be granted or denied, or what type of accesses should be granted to that specific role. Okay, so here in this category, you you assign access control based on the roles of the user. Let's suppose you have a user consider this is a class we have a normal user we have a gr we have a cr and we have for example a ta in this case our student has a different role while our uh, let make mcr while our cr has a different role actually he has to perform two roles and then our GR has actually a different role they both share a common role and then our TA actually has a different role shared with the student so based on the roles of the of the subjects uh, you allow uh, different you define different access policies and then we have the second type which is known as the task or task based uh, access control here uh, the task based control are tied to a particular job or you can say a particular responsibility such as uh, the departmental printer administrator well there is a confusion between the, these two categories so that is why some uh, some people consider the task based access control as a sub role or a subtype of the previous category that is it is a subtype of the role based uh, access control or some consider them to be the same thing but from two different aspects okay so uh, we will consider it to be a sub role of the previous category actually the task based access control uh, make it easier to maintain the restriction associated with a particular role or task especially if different people perform the role or the task so uh, the main idea is that instead of constantly assigning and then revoking the privileges of employees who come and go the administrator simply assign access rights to the role or to the task okay so let's suppose a is manager of the company he has certain uh, access uh, policies defined when a leave and b join the company then the same policies will be applied to b so here in task based or in role based access control we define the policies not for the persons but for the role or for the task and then uh, the third category is the mandatory access control this is something different however it is also a form of the lattice based non -discre discretionary access control and here we have to use some data classification schemes they give user and data owners a limited control over 
access to information resources, limited control. This policy, as you can see, the word mandatory, this uh, mean an entity that has clearance to access a resource, authorization authentication has been passed. Now, in that case, that user may not be willingly be able to enable another entity to access that resource. For example, we have a CR and he has some access rights. So the CR will not allow any particular student or he will not give his access rights to any particular uh, student in the class. So make is actually based on the subject uh, clearance and objects label, two terms, subject clearance and object label. Subject and object have clearance and labels in this technique. And these labels could be confidentiality, it could be a secret, it could be a trust, things like that. So in simple word, the subject, the user, the CR may access an object only if the subject clearance is equal to or greater than the object label. Or you can say that the CR, which is the subject in this case, cannot share objects with other subjects like the class students who lack the proper clearance because they are not authorized to do such things which CR can do. Okay, so he will not be able to transfer their rights to someone else. And this is something which focus on confidentiality of the data as well. And this is a concept that was derived from uh, the military information security systems. And it is best covered in the trusted system. We also have another type that is known as attribute based access control and this is the new type of access control uh, method and this was recently proposed by NIST. Uh, actually there are characteristics or attributes of a subject. For example, you have a subject who is a user. So this subject must have a name. This subject must have a date of birth have a home address, have a training record, educational record, job history and things like that. All these are information, all these information are example of attributes. Okay. These characteristics are called the subject attributes. And this type of access control mechanism actually uh, uses one or all of these attributes to control access to a particular set of data. Okay, uh, attribute based access control draws on a set of characteristics which we commonly known as attributes. Uh, this include three types of attributes, user attribute, uh, environmental attribute and resources attribute. User attributes, as I just mentioned, it could be username, it could be address of the user, organization ID of the user, security clearance, and so on. Environmental attributes include like at which time you access a system resource, what is the location of the data, uh, what is the threat level of that at that time, and things like that related to the environment. And resource attributes include things like the creation date of that resource, who is who actually created that resource, what is the file name of that resource if it is a file, and what is the sensitivity level of that file and things like that. So if I uh, give you an example of this type uh, which cover these three attributes, that is going to be like uh, uh, your zip code. Okay. How? Let's suppose you have a system uh, and you look for a movie on a website and that movie will require to enter your zip code and then based on your zip code it will display information in which theater in which cinema actually the movie is played at that time okay, or the schedule of the movie at that particular uh, 
zip code for that particular zip code okay so uh, in this case you actually the zip code that you provide is actually something uh, which is related to the attribute which reflect the concept of the attribute now we have some access control mechanism in general all access control approaches they rely on the following four mechanism identification authentication authorization and accountability we shed some light on these topics at the beginning of this lecture let us see in details identification very simple that is how a user tells a system who he or she is for example your username your user id your email id all these are example of identification so the identification component of an access control system is normally uh, relatively simple mechanism which is based either either on uh, your username or your user id and it is actually a mechanism which uh, an unverified or unauthenticated entities uh, entities who seek access to a resource they need to prove themselves whether they are a valid user or not for that purpose you need a valid identifier but not only identifier there is only one component okay uh, some organization i uh, uses composite identifiers by concern concatenating different elements you see for example sometime uh, let's suppose your email ids they have some composite uh, identifiers because it reflects your name as well as uh, your uh, your course let's suppose bsse 2016 a b c things like that so concatenation of different elements it could be department codes it could be any random number it could be special characters to make unique identifiers within a specific domain other organizations they generally generate random ids and it depends on the nature of the organization which type of ids they actually create or generate for their users and then we have the second component there is the authentication and it is actually the act of establishing or confirming something or someone as authentic which mean that uh, the claim made by the user is true for example you are a user you make the uh, identification now it's time to authenticate yourself you need to prove that the id you have provided is actually your own id and for that you need to provide a password so authenticating a person often consist of verifying their identity because your identity is public you can sure share your id with someone else but you cannot share your password with someone else actually the process involves a uh, three widely used mechanism okay uh, let me see the details yes something that you know something that you have and something that you are let us see them one by one something you know this factor of authentication depends on what the unverified user knows and what he can or she can recall for example it could be your password that you know only you know and that you can recall there is another concept i am not sure whether you are familiar with it or not nowadays for security purposes people prefer to use pass phrases instead of password i will share a short video on the course website about pass phrases okay that is like uh, a new approach for uh, instead of using password people prefer to use pass phrases because a password you know is a private word or a combination of characters that only the user should know but one of the biggest debate in the information security industry is about the complexity of the password on one hand a password should be difficult to guess against dictionary attacks which mean it cannot be a series of letters or words that is easily associated with the user such as your first name your last name your country name your spouse name your child name your pet name etc by the same uh, 
your password should not be a series of number like your telephone number your nic number your social security number your street number your date of birth and things like that however besides from the fact on the other side your password must be easy to remember which means it should be short or easily associated with something so there is a conflict between these two things on one side we are saying one thing on the other side we are claiming another thing so to address these issues uh, now the pass phrase is used which is actually a series of character that is typically longer than the password and can be used to derive a virtual password by using uh, the words of the pass phrase you can create a longer and a stronger password and also easy to remember and this concept is getting uh, popularity among a uh, users especially the security experts that is the first thing something you know the next thing is something you have this authentication factor actually depends on something an unverified user has and can produce when required one example is your id card having a chip inside it your atm card with magnetic strips uh, that contain the digital pin code and things like that okay so something that you have something that you possess in order to prove your identity and finally you have the third uh, factor that is something you are this authentication factor uh, actually depends on individual characteristics what are those characteristics your fingerprints your palm prints your hand geometry your hand geometry and then your eye retina and iris scan all these are the things that you can own some of these characteristics are known as biometrics okay okay as you know that certain logical or physical areas uh may require the use of strong authentication at least two different types of authentication are required for example you go to atm machine then two types of authentication are required the card and the pin okay so two factor authentication and maybe in more secure area you would be required to have three types of authentication mechanism in use as well so it depends so biometric access control uh, actually it relies on the recognition the same thing that you use for example how you recognize your friends your family other people your class fellow your mates your teachers biometrics so the use of biometric based authentication is expected to have a significant impact and that is why you have biometric features now in your smartphones so biometric authentication technology it includes several things like fingerprint like palm like hand geometry like facial recognition like retinal system like iris system all a possible biometric however research is researchers have shown that only three biometric features are unique to every person the fingerprint the retina of the eye and the iris of the eye then we have another uh, access control mechanism and that is the authorization and uh, authorization as we just saw is related with the access control it is actually the process by which you decide if a person a user or a program or a device is allowed to have access to the data to the resource to the functionality or to the service or not when a customer try to use a resource the authentic the authorization process checks that the consumer has been granted permission to that resource or not so it is actually the matching of an un uh, of an authenticated entity to a list of information assets and then determine the corresponding level of access control and this list is usually known as acl we are talking again and again about acl and this is going to be the topic the last topic of this lecture acl so in general authorization uh, can be handled uh, in different ways uh, for example uh, it can be for individual as we just saw in the previous slides it can be for individual user it can be for a group of user or it can be for the whole world like you allow access to the whole world to the whole class for example another uh, 
mechanism is the accountability that is the fourth one and accountability uh, is also known as auditability and it uh, it ensures that all actions on a system whether authorized or unauthorized can be attributed to an authenticated identity whatever action you perform on a system that must be recorded accountability is most often uh, accomplished as i just say by means of system logs or in case of databases database logs sometimes they are called database journals and uh, later on we observe those things to see if something wrongs if something wrongs happen or not so system logs actually record specific information such as if a person is trying to take access to a system and he provide the password wrong three times then such action could be recorded and even it could be reported to the user and that is why sometime when you are trying to enter your own password uh, by mistakenly you you you, remember, you do not remember your password and you try it three times and then your account is blocked and you will receive even an sms maybe or an email an email on an alternative id that somebody is trying to access your account whether it is you or someone else okay so accountability helps us a lot and logs have many uses as well it can be used for security purposes like intrusion detection uh, like determining what is the cause of a failure or simply tracking the use of a particular resource who is using the resource who is actually making the changes to that resource at which time they are making the changes and things like that for accountability reasons and this is also known as auditability and finally the last topic is acl access control list and i would prefer if you spend some time on the acl and as i just mentioned it's like a database uh, which store the access rights to an object uh, and actually the subject where, uh, when a subject access a resource then that acl is consulted to see whether that that subject is allowed to access that object or not so actually it is uh, you can say it is a table or a database which will contain a uh, different control matrices and that will state who may access a given object and what are the rights allocated for that subject or for that user and sometimes the entries in the acl they are known as ace access control entries okay so you can spend some time to look into that topic so this was about today uh, lecture in today lecture we studied about access control mechanism we saw what are the different elements of the access control mechanism what are the different types of the access uh, control mechanism how we can use it and things like that so thank you for watching the video see you in the virtual class online till then goodbye and take care